I'm Dr. Juan Rivera. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Today, we'll explore the amazing world of the female reproductive system, a complex and very important system. Knowing this is key for anyone wanting to get better at and expand their medical Spanish so you can talk clearly in a clinic. Learning these specific words not only makes your medical knowledge bigger, but it also helps you understand women's health better. And what's even more important, it builds trust and makes talking with your Spanish-speaking patients clearer and more effective, creating a feeling of trust and understanding between you. Being able to explain sensitive diagnoses and procedures in the patient's native language really lowers their worry, helps them understand their health situation better, and in the end, makes the care they get better. This system is much more than just a bunch of organs. It's a wonder of biology. It's the very start of human life. And because of that, it deserves our deepest respect, admiration, and of course, a lot of careful study. In this educational video, we'll carefully break down the anatomy of the female reproductive system, looking at each organ and what it does. We'll also look at the main body processes that happen in this system like ovulation and menstruation, and we'll talk about some common issues that can affect women's reproductive health, giving you every important medical term in Spanish, along with its exact English meaning, to help you learn both languages. Our main goal is for you to feel completely sure and comfortable talking with your patients about these very important and often sensitive topics, making the connection and relationship you build with each of your patients better, creating a feeling of trust and care. Remember, it's not just about remembering a list of words and technical terms, but about truly understanding their specific meaning and how they apply in everyday medical practice. So get ready to dive deep into the amazing world of female anatomy and how the body works exploring every detail from a two-language viewpoint that will make your understanding richer and get you ready to give amazing medical care. So without further ado, let's start this exciting journey of learning and discovery in women's health together. Let's start with the outer parts, known as the vulva, which includes the labia majora, labia minora, clitoris, vaginal opening and urinary opening. The labia majora and minora protect the inner parts and keep things moist, while the clitoris is key for sexual pleasure. The vaginal opening allows for menstruation, childbirth, and sexual activity. The urinary opening is only for urine. Knowing these terms in English will help you explain findings and procedures clearly and respectfully. Now let's dive into the heart of female anatomy, exploring the internal organs that play vital roles in reproduction and overall health. We'll start with the vagina, the cervix, and the uterus, each with unique and connected jobs. The vagina is a stretchy tube, a really amazing and flexible part, essential for sex, allowing sperm to enter. It also plays a super important role during childbirth, serving as the exit path for menstruation, a vital monthly process for fertility. The cervix, acting like a gatekeeper, connects the vagina to the uterus, offering protection against infections by making cervical mucus, which is a natural shield. Plus, the cervix can really stretch during childbirth, making it easier for the baby to be born. The uterus, often called the womb, is the safe place where pregnancy grows, a nourishing and protecting space. Its inner lining, the endometrium, is always changing and ready. It gets thicker to get ready for a fertilized egg to attach. If there's no fertilization, this tissue sheds, leading to menstruation. The myometrium, the muscular layer of the uterus, is super important because it's responsible for the strong contractions that push the baby out during birth. Being able to tell the difference between the endometrium and the myometrium is key to diagnosing conditions like endometriosis, which affects the endometrial tissue. It also helps find myomas or uterine fibroids, which are common non-cancerous growths. Explaining these ideas in simple, easy to understand language really helps patients understand better, letting them be an active part of their own healthcare. On each side of the uterus are two very important organs, the ovaries. These small but mighty organs are super important for a woman's reproductive health. The main job of the ovaries is to make eggs, which are the female reproductive cells. This process, called ovulation, is key for getting pregnant. Besides making eggs, the ovaries also make important hormones like estrogen and progesterone. These hormones play a big part in how female body parts develop and in controlling the menstrual cycle. From birth, a woman's ovaries hold all the eggs she will ever have in her reproductive life. These eggs are at different stages of growing inside little sacs called ovarian follicles. The ovaries are super important for controlling the menstrual cycle, 
which gets a woman's body ready for a possible pregnancy every month. The fallopian tubes, also called oviducts, are two tubes that connect the ovaries to the uterus, making a vital path for the egg to travel. It's right in the fallopian tubes where fertilization happens, which is when the egg and sperm meet. Around the ovaries are the fimbria, which are finger-like parts that help guide the egg release during ovulation into the fallopian tube. Once inside the tube, the egg waits for a sperm to arrive, leading to fertilization and, well, the start of a new life. But if the fallopian tubes are blocked or hurt, this can lead to not being able to get pregnant, making it hard or impossible to have a baby, or it can raise the chance of an ectopic pregnancy, which is a dangerous situation where the fertilized egg grows outside the uterus. After fertilization, the fertilized egg, now called the zygote, travels through the fallopian tube to the uterus, where it will attach to the uterine wall to keep growing. If the egg isn't fertilized, it breaks down and is absorbed back into the body, starting a new menstrual cycle. So, knowing these specific words is super important to properly understand and explain problems with getting pregnant, the different medical procedures available, and to be a part of talks about reproductive health. The menstrual cycle lasts about 28 days on average, starting with menstruation. During the follicular phase, FSH helps follicles grow in the ovaries, which make estrogen. More estrogen makes the uterine lining thicker, only one follicle fully matures. Ovulation happens in the middle of the cycle, when LH releases the egg. After ovulation, the corpus luteum makes progesterone to keep the uterine lining ready. If there is no pregnancy, hormone levels drop and a new cycle begins with menstruation. Understanding this process helps explain period problems and fertility issues. Fertilization happens when a sperm enters an egg, starting life. This is how a zygote is formed. The zygote quickly divides and travels through the fallopian tube to the uterus, becoming a blastocyst along the way. The blastocyst then firmly attaches to the endometrium, starting the pregnancy. The HCG hormone, made after the embryo attaches, is very important because it helps keep the early pregnancy going. The baby grows inside the mother's womb for about 40 weeks, safely protected by the amniotic sac and the placenta. Knowing these steps in detail is key for good prenatal care. Among the common conditions are uterine fibroids, which are harmless growths that can cause bleeding and pain. Endometriosis means that tissue like the lining of the womb grows outside the womb, causing pain and making it hard to have a baby. Polycystic ovary syndrome leads to periods that aren't regular, acne, and trouble releasing eggs. These problems need special care for each person and clear talks with the patient. Practice these words with your co-workers and patients to help you learn better. Look for more help like medical dictionaries and Spanish medical classes. Before you go, check the description below for a special link to resources designed to help you learn medical Spanish and become proficient even faster. Thank you for joining me on this journey through the female reproductive system.